Hey everybody. All right, so we're going to finish up the first session of the practice test by finishing numbers 12 and 13. Uh, let's go right into it. So number 12, a guidance counselor will meet with 12 students to discuss their grade point averages. The list of the grade point averages is shown below. They give us 12 numbers here. Okay, these are all representing these kids' grades, or GPAs rather. Create a histogram to show, it's important, create a histogram to show the distribution of grade point averages. So that's what we're going to create here. Now when you're looking at this digitally, these are all things that can be dragged. This is an individual bar, this is, this is, and this is. These are all things that can be dragged, okay? Um, so that's, that's basically how it works. Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind is that these are all starting at one. They're not all starting at zero, okay? So if you click on the top of this, you should be able to move it up or down, okay? So here's our categories. Zero to one, one to two, two to three, and three to four. So we're gonna look and see how many are between zero and one. If you look through here, there are none that are zero through one. So this one, you actually need to move down. You need to drag this down, okay? So when you look at this, you drag it down to here, so there's no bar here. That's something that a lot of students made a mistake when they were doing this. They left it as one, which throws the entire thing off. Okay, then we're looking for one to two. So that's one to two, that's one to two, and that's it. So we'd actually move this bar up to two, so it would be up to here, so you click and drag that, okay? Cross those out. Now, because you're doing this digitally, you can't really, let me see if you can, I don't think you can annotate on that. This is number 12. So let me quickly check that. Um, no, you can't. There's really no way to do that, unfortunately. So, oh well. So yeah, one thing you could do is you could rewrite these problems on pieces, these problems, these grades on a piece of scrap paper. The only danger in that is that if you make a mistake in transcribing it, you could throw your work off. So. I would, I would recommend being able to cross them out, but if you think there's an issue with that, maybe not. Let's do what makes you feel more comfortable. But I do think there's value in being able to cross these out. All right, so two to three. Here's one of them. There's another one, two, three, four. There's four of them. Double check. Yep. So we're going to go up four here. So this is going to go up to here. That's four. And the last one, three to four, it should be the rest of these, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. This will go all the way up to six. Okay. And that's it. So this would be empty. This would be up to here, here, and here. And that's it. That's your histogram. Key things here when you're looking over this problem is make sure you drag this down and make sure your total number of students should be 12. So we should add this up and it should all add up to 12. So zero plus two plus four plus six. So 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12. Yep, we got 12, just to make sure we didn't miss any of them. All right, cool. And we got the last one, which is 13, which was actually not in the PDF originally. I apologize. I had to go back and reprint that. So here we go. So 10 years ago, the population of a town increased, sorry, was 5,085 people. Since then, the population of the town has increased by a total of 19.51% and or yeah. Which of the following is closest to the current population of the town? So we're looking for something that's closest to the current population. There's a few key things you need to realize here. The word closest to or phrase closest to, that means we're like working on an estimation problem. Okay, we're going to estimate here. Uh, we're given, this is the current number of people, sorry, the 10 years ago, the number of people, and it went up by almost 20%. All right, and we're trying to figure out what it's currently at. So we know what it started at, we know the percentage by which it increased, we just don't know what it ended up with. So I'm immediately gonna estimate, I'm gonna change this to 5,000. Now the less we move the numbers, the better off we're gonna be. So I wanna move this to 5,000 people. And originally when I solved this, I actually moved this to 19.5%, but I'm gonna just go ahead to 20%. All right, and then 20%. So 20%, we're gonna convert that to a decimal, so that should be 2 tenths, or 20 hundredths, okay? So if we multiply these together, we should get what's 20% of 5,000. So we have a conversion here. Remember to convert that to a decimal. Let me move in here so it's a little easier to see. There you go. And 5,000 times, well, let's write it this way, because I think most of us will be writing this out. Okay. So zero, then we have three zeros, and then 10. We're going to lose two from the decimal. So 1,000. There we go. Okay. So 20% of that would be 1,000. So it went roughly up by 1,000. So 5,000 plus the amount it went up by, which was 1,000, would be 6,000. Now, 
Again, this is an estimation, all right? But you get the right answer by doing it that way. Okay, so 6,000 is closest to the current population of town. Um, if you were to do this out without estimating it, let's, let's do that right now, okay? Let's see what we get. If we had a calculator available to us. Let's see here, make sure you guys can see this. So I'm gonna convert this to a decimal. This will be decimal, so 1951 times 5,085. That's just under 1,000, so it's not a big difference. And we're going to add that to 5,085. Yep, and that's closest to it. So this is the actual amount it would be at. So we're only 77 off. The rest of these are much further away from us. So yeah, we worked out okay. All right, so again, this is really just a, you know, a question of whether or not we can estimate effectively. And uh, yeah, it's just really it. So... That concludes the whole, after you've watched this video, if you've watched the rest of them, that means you've watched all the way through the first uh, session of the practice test. Let me know if there's any of these questions that are still really confusing to you, either in the comment section or shoot me an email or in class is the best way, obviously, but let me know. All right, thanks, guys.